This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. We are Bezrat Hashem dedicating tonight's class for complete health of a good friend, Yuda Arye Ben Baruch Mordechai. From heaven, they're answering all of my prayers always and I'm very happy with this amazing thing. I'll tell you tonight, Bezat Hashem, the secret of how your prayers can be answered as well. It's not a hard thing, it's just a matter of a little bit of tuning. The um, topic of tonight's class is the tshuva is not what you thought it is. And I'll tell you why. We're not going to shake the universe, we're not going to make huge changes. You just need to understand. The meaning of the word tshuva is to come back. Hashem is saying, come back to me and I'll come back to you. It's a whole wonderful comeback to Hashem. And Hashem is... That's going to be a very nice comeback when Hashem will come back. That's, that's going to be a beauty. So, the thing is that we need to see how to come back to Hashem. But where is Hashem place? Where is He? Where should we come back to? And in the Zara Kadosh it says that the meaning of the word Tshuva is to come back to the place that you've been took from. Means we were there once and we need to go back to that place. We must go back to that place that we were at. And to come back to that place, it's first of all to recognize that place. It's to know where we should go to because if you're lost, if you don't know where to go, so you're losing your direction very fast. Now, Many people in this world are not counting on themselves. I'm so happy because I see such a holy friend that I miss and so many years I haven't seen him. And I'm very happy that you came. Thank you, Nehemiah. Thank you for coming. And I think it should say uh, Shekhyano on that, Meshem Malchut, Baruch Atta Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Shekhyano, Vekimano, Vegeano Lezman Ezeh. You're a good friend. Yeah. So, more than one year. Very happy you came. Many people don't have their self-confident to count on themselves and to find the direction, to find their own way, and to find Hashem finally. So they are usually looking to the sides and asking directions. And if you don't know which way to go, it's the most honest thing and simple thing to ask, and it's a very good thing. But the truth is that the path to the truth to come back it's to come back through the roots of your own soul. It's to come back to who you were once when you were united and one and complete with Hashem. So the real truth is that no one is really able to give you the perfect guidings on which steps to make. Just people can guide you on a general direction. Now if you want to know where Jerusalem is at, so we can say, okay, it's over there. But the truth is that Jerusalem can be 5 inches to the right or 20 inches to the left and over there in reality is going to be hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away. Jerusalem can be like over there and it's way, way, way far from where you guided him. But because that you are guiding him slowly to keep
put filin. Okay, I put filin, that's it, Mashiach came. No, we see we're putting filin, Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam every day, and Mashiach is still somewhere. And we're keeping Shabbat, and the salvation have not came completely yet. Even though that we are going in the right, right direction, we're following the rules of the Torah, and we're following the advice of Chachamim, the righteous and, and, and wise people that are teaching, and wise people with life experience, we're following their advice and, and, and trying, but still... own soul, bringing himself to that place that his self-confidence will be so strong and, and stable that he will find the ability to find Hashem inside of himself and to recognize the godliness that lives inside of him. Because the place of Hashem is not in heaven or in Jerusalem or in the Harabait, in, it's not in the Beit HaMikdash. The sparks of the Shekhinah Kedosha from days of destruction fell and spread into thousands and millions of spots, of places, of locations. And most of those sparks lives inside of people. And those are portions of Shekhinah, of holiness, of godliness that lives inside of us, like that many verses are saying. Asuli mikdash v'trochanti betocham, I'm going to live inside of you. I'm with my people, lives inside of them. Shochenitam betoch tum otam, lives with them even in. And you're making up lies and stories. And you're saying, no, chas shalom, I don't want to hear. I don't want to talk. And you start making fake reality, creating a, a lie on your own. When you're lying, when you're making up a theory, a story, so then in that moment the Creator cannot be with you. But as long as you're searching and you're looking, your own emotional body and to recognize who you really are. Now that mission is not that hard, like I told you. It sounds so hard, we are so confused and we're so lost in so many ways and we don't know the answers to all the questions and for sure we haven't learned enough and we haven't prayed enough and we're not holy enough. All those assumptions based on other people's opinion and criticism about you, about us. When you are looking into the depths of your own soul, when you're reaching out to your true self, when you're trying to find who you really are, what that you will find over there inside of yourself is an ancient soul. He's not a 20 years old person or 50 or 70 years old. You are ancient more than time because your soul is eternal. And when you will connect yourself to your soul, to your real spiritual side, you will find inside of yourself an inner connection that connects you to an endless spring of eternity. 
And suddenly you will have an access to the ancient archives of beyond and before creation. And you'll understand things that the prophets could understand. And you will get the wisdom from within and the real conclusion that will give you the ability to cross every challenge and to understand every problem to solve it and to find advice to every situation in life. And it's not hard. Something small is missing. And what is that small thing? It's your self-esteem. It's your understanding that you are spiritual and not to go and judge yourself and critical yourself, criticize yourself based on your physicality, on the damage that exile caused you, that this physical world caused you, that you couldn't learn enough, that you are terrified and lost and confused, that you are scared to talk to people, that you are afraid to build relationship and to count on people, that you lost trust on, in human beings, that you don't have enough faith, that your knowledge is not complete, that you're tired, that you're not young, that you don't have the financial abilities to do whatever you think that you should do. All those things are not who you are. That's the, the court, that's the field that you need to play in. That's your life. In that field, you need to work with the power of your spirit, with the power of your soul. Now for that, we need to be connected to who we are to know who you are as a player. Now you need to play. So one rabbi will tell you, hey, you need to follow this method. Another person will tell you, hey, you need to follow my guidings. Your parents, they want you to be a lawyer. Your wife, she just, I don't know what, and whatever. So what are you going to do? Which answer is right to follow which advice? You don't know. And you cannot play and uh, to have multi-personalities to satisfy everyone. In the end of the day, you must be who you are. The real you that you are. Now, in that moment, when you will reach that place, and I'll give you the advice soon to know exactly how to be who you are, and how to find who you are. And it's easy. It's not a hard thing. What that will happen to you in that moment is that your inner magnet will pull, will click to the divine magnet. And suddenly you'll be connected. You'll feel okay. Even if you cannot learn. Even if you're not able to daven. Even if you're not making it to shul on time. Even if you don't have the money that you thought one hour ago that you must have. Suddenly you'll have breath. You'll have oxygen. You'll be able to function, to think, to be relaxed. What you will have, you will have faith. Suddenly you will believe that the Creator is with you and everything going to be okay. How can we bring Hashem to be with you? How can we bring ourselves to be one with Hashem? What's the secret? The secret is only to be positive about ourselves. That's the only trick. That's the only answer. And why? Because who you are in the secret of your creation is the soul. And a soul is portion of heaven from above. And the verse is saying on Hashem, Kitov Hashem, that Hashem is good. And Hashem is good means that He is all good. And when He is all good, also portions that came out of Him and dressed into bodies and fit into patterns of, of physicality contains from the spiritual aspect of their nature, good godliness, and that's it. When you are connecting yourself to your physicality, so you have weight, and you have shape, and you have power, and you have sources, and you have energies, and you have many things that depends in physicality, and you have your limitations as well. But when you are focusing your mind to your inner aspect, to who you are from the spiritual source of your creation, who are you in the inner channel, in the inner connection to the God, to the Creator Himself, when you are doing that connection and your mind is set to that place, you are only good. You are only good. Maybe you are wearing a dark suit. Maybe you're wearing a heavy, thick armor. Maybe you're dragging a weight, 
very like high weight. Maybe you are tired. Maybe your knees are not like they've been. Maybe your back is not the same. But who you are is not your body. Now when you are going, explaining to yourself that you are your physicality, that you are your body, so then your self-esteem is broken because your knees are not the same and your back is not the same and your mind is not the same. So all of your essence is, is bent, is crooked, is broken, and then you're not happy. But when you realize that you are not your vehicle, that you're not your body, that you are the godly soul that lives inside of you, so in that moment you become to be a flaming torch of holy fire. And you're always happy. And you are connected from within. Vices and will break your physicality to, 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 to ashes, to, to, to earth, to, to gonna grind you. You won't feel the pain. Because you will be attached to your soul and your soul is... And when you will connect yourself to who you are, you will live happily. You'll be happy. You'll be satisfied. And that's a complete tshuva. And the question is why that is complete tshuva. The Rambam is telling us the way to do tshuva. We're not now making inspire, inspiring videos talking about tshuva with no connection to halakha, to the Jewish rules. We're trying to explain what is the real way to do tshuva according to the Torah, according to the halacha. It's not a movie. What the Rambam is telling us about mitzvah tshuva. Mitzvah tshuva is an obligation on every person in the universe, in the world. That when he sees and recognizes in himself that he did something wrong, he should work on himself to fix himself, to express his regret, his sorrow from the fact that he messed up in that way, that he messed up. It can be in front of the Creator, it can be in front of people that you're going to fail, it can be in front of yourself, that you disappointed yourself. In all those situations, in front of God, in front of people, in front of yourself, if you felt, if you feel that you did something wrong, you need to bring forgiveness. You need to apologize. You need to fix what that you have done wrong. The way to do it, first of all, is to express your regret. When you express your regret, Something relief. You feel much lighter. You feel a lot better. Now you need to apologize. Now you need to accept on yourself not to sin. Not to fail in that failure again. How you do that? You just need to express your feelings with your mouth. First of all, you apologize. You say, I'm sorry. If I, mess, I messed up. If I hurt you, I want to say sorry. And then you can accept on yourself or to try to accept on yourself not to do that again. To ask, please. I'm going to work on myself from now on, not to fail anymore. And that's where your tshuva is finished now. What's really spiritually happening when you do tshuva, when you come back to Hashem? What that happens is 
that all those coverings, that all those curtains that are blocking the light of Hashem from you are falling and melting and disappearing. And in that moment that you achieved that forgiveness, that you have been forgiven, in that moment you can see Hashem. The reason for us not being able to see and recognize the Creator is only because that we sinned. When a person is sinning, so his spiritual ability is become limited and he falls into the trap of physicality. The, 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 the sin itself takes place in a person's life when he's choosing, when he choose to follow physicality. For an example, he's so hungry that he's not able to wash his hands. So that's a sin if he was obligated to wash his sin. He feels that he must make money urgently and he's under too much pressure. And by that, he is cleansing, purifying, cleaning those walls of separations that were blocking him one moment ago from connecting to the Creator. And from now on, he will be connected. How he will be connected? Because he's been forgiven. And he will be able to recognize the Creator that next time he won't sin, he won't fail again, because he completed his tshuva. So it means that when a person is completing his tshuva, he is not... He will always gonna recognize how good are things to him. He will be full of gratitude and appreciation and love and he will be happy and satisfied from meetings and from conversations and even from challenges in life. He won't fall to sadness and to despair. He will climb above those difficulties and challenges and he will... When you will connect yourself to who you are within, you'll find who Hashem is inside all your life situations. When you are disconnected from who you are in all your life challenges, you're hitting the wall in every situation and challenge in life. But when you are who you are, when you recognize that you are a soul, so as a soul, when you're coming to any place in life, you will understand the purpose of you being over there. You will understand that you're in a mission. You'll find the wisdom and the right mission of yours to work and to do and to keep for sake of heaven. For the benefit of the souls that are over there. And in every moment of life, you'll find purpose. 
and your life will be meaningful and you'll understand what your mission and what's the mission of all of your beloved ones. And not only that you'll find the right understanding what is the purpose, you'll also find the right advice to help everyone. Because that is the real will of the Creator from us. That we will reveal His light to the world. That we will walk like lighthouses. Be light to the nations. Going to go and spread faith between thousands and millions of people. Going to supply the right advice to everyone in need. To everyone that is thirsty will serve water. That we will know how to slice the bread to every hungry person. That we will know which portion to hand to every person in the world. That we will recognize the real need of people and not just going to feed them with our leftovers or whatever we want to give. Just going to understand what really they need. Chanoch l'anar al pidarko. Going to educate the children based on their needs, on their path, on their way. Going to know exactly how to soul. And like I said, when a person is connecting himself to his spiritual essence, to his real spiritual being, in that moment, his inner access, his inner spiritual channel to the Creator is open wide. And then your prayers are much stronger. Every moment of learning Torah and focusing in holy actions is much pow more powerful. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.